I raped you. Porn. Some time ago, I made a series of videos about Peter Popoff. For those unfamiliar with Popoff, he is a charlatan, a fraud and a con man, who will willingly exploit the vulnerable, the mentally and physically ill, the poor and financially desperate, and anyone else susceptible enough to be taken in by his deceit. For those unfamiliar with Popov, I've linked a number of videos about him in the description. In particular, I would recommend watching the video in which James Randi exposes Popov as a fraud back in the 1980s, and also one concerning more recent investigations into Popov by Inside Edition. I thought I'd check up and see how Popov was doing. I began by looking at his website, and I was not surprised to see that he was still offering his miracle spring water. Let's face it, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Or, in Popov's case, if a scam keeps working, why change it? His miracle spring water has earned him millions over the years, whilst it has also, of course, cost his victims an equivalent amount. Having ordered some spring water, I checked out his television schedule and found that he was broadcasting in the United Kingdom. Although the schedule is out of date, I did confirm that he does broadcast on a daily basis on the Sky Channel 590, also known as the Gospel Channel. I suffered as much of one of his programs as I could in order to check that he was still using the same style of cheap salesmanship to pimp and promote his scam. The Bible teaches debt cancellation. Well, you're going to hear these testimonies. Here we go. It was last June. You said the dates for uh, June 14th and 15th. And God blessed me. He paid off the $13,000 debt. So a $13,000 debt was paid. Sure enough, he was still seeking to convince his victims of the efficiency of his spring water as a supposed miracle cure for a variety of medical conditions and also for debt. In doing so, he used a disturbing combination of quoting biblical passages and a reliance upon testimonials. The significance of the fact that he is still doing the same thing is that it was exactly this that formed the basis of a complaint to Ofcom a few years ago. Ofcom is a regulatory body that oversees television broadcasts in the United Kingdom and, inter alia, seeks to protect the public from scams and sharp practices. Following a complaint about Popoff, on the 7th of July 2008, Ofcom, influenced by the findings of the Advertising Standards Authority, decided that the Popoff program was in breach of a number of the provisions of the code applicable to broadcasters. In particular, some of those areas I identified above, namely, the use of testimonials, and the lack of evidence to support claims. In its decision, Ofcom made some interesting findings. Broadcasters of religious programs must establish for themselves whether any claims as to benefits provided by products supplied by ministries providing programs to their services can be justified. Broadcasters should not rely, for example, on the evidence of testimonials within the programs alone but should seek to obtain sufficient and independent verification. Later, broadcasters should also consider conducting appropriate research when approached by any ministry to broadcast their religious programs. They must satisfy themselves that the broadcast of this material would not result in a breach of the code. Ofcom expects broadcasters to be able to demonstrate that they took all reasonable steps to be able to demonstrate, as appropriate, that these programs did not, for example, exploit the susceptibilities of its potential audience or were platforms for the promotion of products or services. The pop-up program that was the subject of this decision was aired on Passion TV. As will be seen from the decision, responsibility for programs falls on the broadcaster rather than the producer. After this decision by Ofcom, Passion TV stopped broadcasting programs produced by Popoff. Given these findings, I was curious to know how Popoff had returned to UK television via the Gospel Channel, so I filed a complaint to Ofcom in which I referred to their own earlier findings about Popoff. I received a speedy reply. Thank you for registering the complaint below about the Gospel Channel. Although noting your concerns about this service, Ofcom is unable to help you. Whilst Gospel Channel is carried on Sky, they do not appear to be operating under an Ofcom license and are therefore not bound by our regulations. We understand that they are licensed from Iceland and consequently are regulated by the relevant authorities there. 
Licenses granted in EC countries are recognised throughout Europe, also extending to Iceland, and licence channels are often carried on other domestic satellite platforms, in this instance, Sky. The previous rulings you refer to relating to this presenter concerned his appearance on Ofcom licence channels at that time, but Gospel Channel falls outside our remit, and if you wish to pursue your complaint, we recommend that you contact the channel directly in the first instance, and if you are unhappy with their response or wish to escalate your complaint, they will direct you to their licensing authority. A link is then given. We'll come back to the Gospel Channel shortly, but in the meantime I contacted Sky Television. Not an easy venture, nor as productive as I would have hoped. Hi, I wonder if you can help me. I'm having a difficulty in tracking down an appropriate telephone number in for which to uh, register a complaint about the content of one of your programmes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, the position is that I want to make a complaint about one of the programmes, Ed, um, on Sky. Am I speaking to... Uh, it's Peter Popoff Ministries. Um, it's... Peter Popoff Ministries, um, 590, the Gospel Channel. Right, so what responsibility do you have for the programmes that are broadcast? That would be helpful. Um, Peter Popoff is a known fraudster uh, and con artist. Um, this isn't a matter of opinion, it's a matter of um, recorded fact. Uh, he ran the, exactly the same show on a different channel some years ago and complaints were made to Ofcom and the Advertising Standards Authority as a result of those complaints that... So I next tried the Gospel Channel. Hi, I would like to make a complaint about one of the programmes that you broadcast on the Gospel Channel. Am I speaking to the right people? All right, do you have a number that I could call, please? Right, when, when will the manager be in? All right, I shall try again tomorrow. Thank you. Whilst waiting for the manager to return the next day, I looked further into the Gospel Channel. Their website is linked below. As you'll see, its founder, Eric Erickson, has been blessed by a visitation from God. Also on their website is a list of those who appear on the Gospel Channel. You may recognise some of them. So 24 hours passed, during which time I registered a complaint with Gospel Channel through its website. I also contacted the ASA. Eventually, I got through to the Gospel Channel. This is a recording of part of the conversation I had. Hello? Hello, I'm calling from the Gospel Channel. I have a message to ring you. Oh, thank you very much for getting back to me. Um, yeah, it um, concerns a programme that uh, you broadcast, I think, on a daily basis. Uh, Peter Pop what? It's Peter Popoff Ministries. Right, okay. Are you yes. familiar with it? Um, I am aware that we do program that one, yes. He pays for airtime. Right. Um, are you also aware that um, two years ago a complaint was made about him and his program to Ofcom and the yes. Advertising Standards Authority, and as a result of that his program was removed from um, broadcast in the United Kingdom? No, but I do remember you telling me about this, and I have passed it on to our office in Iceland. Right, and has anything happened? I don't know. The bro all the broadcasting uh, is done from Iceland, and all the decisions are made in Iceland. We, we aren't kept in the loop there. Right. Um, what contact details do you have for Iceland, please? Um, right, I can give you the email of the lady who does organise broadcasting. She's called Sigrun. Yeah, if I could have the email address, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Well, it's Sigrun, which is S-I-G-R-U-N dot E-I at gmail dot com. Okay, so she's the lady who deals with all the airtime. Right. When when did you pass on um, my message to them? I couldn't tell you the exact date. Hang on, I'll have a look. Thank you. Okay, there were two. One was in July and one was October. Right. And, and nothing's happened since July then? Uh, like I said, I don't know if they're taking any action. 
Mm. I can give you a phone number for their office as well if you'd like. Yes, please. Okay. It's plus three five four five eight hundred seven zero three. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank All right. You. Thanks very much for your help. No problem. Following that conversation, I tried calling Iceland twice. On both occasions, my call was unanswered. So I sent an email which reads as follows. Dear Sigrun, I note that you broadcast shows by Peter Popoff Ministries in the UK on Sky Channel 590. You may be aware that PPM was the subject of a complaint to Ofcom a few years ago. Ofcom determined that the content of the programme breached several sections of the code for broadcasters. A copy of their section can be found here. The PPM programme that you broadcast is effectively the same as that which was considered by Ofcom two years ago. Namely, it is hosted by Peter Popoff, a known conman and charlatan. It offers the same product, Miracle Spring Water. It uses testimonials to convince the audience of the efficiency of the product. It provides no evidence to support the claims made. I have the following questions for you. Could you please explain why you are broadcasting a program which would not be allowed to be broadcast by Ofcom? Could you explain why you are broadcasting a program produced by a known conman? Could you explain why you have done nothing about this matter, despite it being reported to you several months ago? Could you tell me what, if anything, you intend to do about this program? If you intend to continue to allow this program to be broadcast, could you please justify your position? If you require any further information, please do not hesitate to contact me, yours, etc. Obviously, I will let you know if and when I get a response to that email. In the event that you may wish to contact the Gospel Channel, I've given their contact details in the description. Whilst waiting for a response, I'll be making further contact with the Advertising Standards Authority and also contacting the Government Minister responsible for broadcasting. I'll let you know what happens. Thank you very much for watching.